Hey guys, Ty and Bryson here, and welcome back to the channel. And today, I've been thinking for some reason a lot about all the mistakes that I basically made with bad relationships that I let go on for years when they should have been shut down, with me going over 250 pounds and being like, what am I doing with my life? And also, it all landed today. It all ended today, I should say. When I started thinking a lot about all of my investing mistakes that I made very early on and how much more money I would have if I didn't make those mistakes, okay? And I don't know if I ever shared this story with you guys, but you're going to hear it right now. Before I was known as the most boring investor on YouTube with a good amount of money, well, before that, I was actually known as the gambler. And to me, that basically means I was making investments without knowing all the facts, and I was fine with it. And I saved up $10,000, legit. $10,000 um, from a minimum wage job over six months, I think it was, and selling some stuff. And I grabbed this money, I invested into the stock market, and I made $1,500 to $2,500. I met this girl, and I basically wasted the money trying to impress this girl. Now, before you call me stupid, don't worry. I know it was pretty stupid, okay? But then I did feel stupid for a very long time making this very dumb mistake, taking my money out the market when it was making me money to do something stupid with it in real life in a sense, okay? But then I heard this other story from this other guy, which was also very stupid, okay? I know some stupid people, by the way, including myself. But he went ahead and he also saved up a bunch of money, okay? A good amount of money from his normal job. And he grabbed that money and he didn't waste it on a girl. He gave it to a friend that had an investment idea and that friend had no experience and that friend lost all the money. Now, obviously, Two very stupid mistakes. And maybe you already made some mistakes, okay? We all have dumb experiences. But overall, the advice came from this very wealthy guy. And he basically said, mistakes will be made. And the goal is, once you make them, you make them. You avoid them for next time, but you got to start over and move on. And boy, am I happy that I didn't stop there like so many people do after failing just once or making just one mistake. I'll never try that again. I'm glad I didn't stop because today I'm known as the boring investor with over $300,000. And that's basically like 30 times more money than I had after I made that dumb, silly mistake when I was a lot younger and I was inexperienced. So my point is, okay, my point is simple. Very simple here. It's basically don't be an idiot like us learn from our mistakes, so that way you don't have to make them yourself, okay? That's super important. It's the most efficient way to avoid disaster. Learn from my disaster, you're gonna experience it, and that way you'll be solid. Watch this video all the way through. All of these are very important, okay? Now, on top of that, destroy the like button. It helps out with the algorithm. And if you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell to so get notified because I post videos every single week on money, finance, and I guarantee in some way, these videos are going to make you money or they're going to make you smile. Either way, you're going to be a lot better off than you were before watching the video. Now, the very first thing that I got to say is this, okay? First mistake people make all the time. They start something without having any clear goals, okay? I remember the story about a UFO. Some crazy guy told me it, and I just told him, I want to live my life in peace. Just leave me alone. But he told me that this UFO fell on this farm, and basically scientists they didn't understand what it was, how it worked. So in order to get to their goal, which was to understand it, they basically took the entire thing apart to figure out what each part basically did, put it back together, and then obviously they had a better understanding. What's the point of that story? The point is I just wanted to tell it and I couldn't find a way to tell it, so I put it in this video. <laughs> but the real story is this, okay? I see so many people in real life where they have this goal, which is, I just wanna be rich in the stock market, but they have no clear agenda to how to get there. How much money do you wanna get? I don't know, I just wanna be rich. How much do you need to invest? I don't know, I just wanna be rich. They have no clear, direct goal of how they're gonna get to what they want to because they don't know what they actually want. So right here, I'm gonna tell you my goals. By the way, also the description down below, you'll see everything you need to know about this, okay? But my first goal is, I wanna make money in the stock market by taking the least amount of risk, and I wanna do it passively by also doing the least amount of work. And I do that by investing into index funds and ETFs and trying to track the overall market. It's a very low risk, good way to make money, and I make 10 to 12%, and I'm fine with that. 
Second, I want to get to the goal where basically my investments, they cover all of my expenses. Now, my expenses are $30,000 a year. To me, that would be an amazing amount of money passively because I have no mortgage. So to me, that is awesome. Clearly, put your number in this right here. Figure out how much money do you need. Very important. Now, simple. I also want to make sure that I don't run out of money by taking investments from my portfolio. If I have 100K and I take out 30K, I'm only going to do it for like three, four years. After that, the money is gone. So I want to make sure that whenever I take out that 30K, it's only 4% of my portfolio because that way, if my money grows at 10, 12% like I told before, I'm always going to have more money being compounded over time and I'm not going to run out of money. So simple equation here is you grab the money that you actually want. In this case, I want $30,000 and you divide it by 0 0.04. That is 4% basically. And it tells you, hey, I need to have $750,000. That right there is my goal. Now, second thing is this, okay? Well, how much money do you need to invest every single month to actually get to that goal? That's also important. So what do you do is this, okay? You go over to Google and you type in savings goal calculator and it takes you right here and it gives you all the information. Savings goal calculator, Google, click the first link, you find this right here. Now, savings goal calculator says, hey, I wanna have 750 in my entire investment account. I have right now 320, maybe a little bit more, market is down. On top of that, I wanna do it in five years. And I also wanna make 12%. That's what I currently make on average, okay? Including dividends and everything else. So overall, I need to invest $2,400 every single month. Now to you, that might sound like a lot of money because if it is a lot of money, okay? But right now, I make a good amount of money. So for me, it's only around 24 to 25% of my money, and that is fine. I'm able to do it and not worry about it. But in the future, I could be making a lot less money or a lot more money, but I go based on what I'm doing right now. Those are my goals right there. Very clearly written, I know how much I want, how much to invest, how I'm gonna get there, and why I invest the way I invest. Everything is there. Now, if you wanna invest this way, automatically and passively. I have a link down below to M1 Finance. When you click it, it takes you right there and copy over my investments to basically do exactly what I do. It's what I've been doing for years and it's been working for me perfectly, okay? That's my entire goal. Plug in your personal number so you know exactly what you basically need to do. Now, second thing, guys, okay? Now, the second thing is, guys, it's better to go slow and steady than to go super fast and not be able to last, okay? That's what she said. But overall, seriously though, seriously, because I'm a serious person, okay? Overall, the main thing is, okay, right now, I'm training for my first ever half marathon. And my coach always tells me the same thing. Tommy, if you go too fast in the beginning, you won't be able to finish your race. You'll blow up midway through the race. And that makes sense. A lot of people, they want to invest a bunch of money and then they run out have an emergency, and they have to sell their investments to basically accommodate whatever else is going on in their lives, okay? So it's better to invest just 10, 20% of your income than to invest a bunch and then have to stop and take money out. The key to investing, the one secret is consistency because that's how compound interest takes effect. You have to have patience and the time to actually allow that money to actually grow over a long period of time. So although it sounds like I invest a lot of money, in reality, I'm just doing 20% of my income right now. That's my personal rule. And obviously, we all make different amounts of money. And I know people that make more than me and don't have enough to invest because they're basically broke because they spend all their money on trash. So it all depends on your money. My goal or my suggestion is basically invest 10 to 20 percent. That's it. Keep it consistent. And if you can do more, don't do more. Just keep it consistent. Keep it consistent. Keep it consistent. And that's going to be a lot better for you. All right. Now, the third mistake that I see all the time is people try to get into super complex, complicated investments, and they think the harder it is to explain it, then that must make them very smart. The answer is it usually means whatever you're doing is too complicated, and most likely you don't understand it yourself. If you ask me, Tommy, explain what you do in one to three sentences, I can do that. I invest to make the most amount of money with the least effort and the least amount of risk by investing into funds that track the overall market. And I use index funds to basically do this. That is it, simple to understand, okay? A few words you might not know, but once you Google it, you know exactly what I'm doing. But if I sound like this, well, I buy pictures online 
and I pick them. And some are apes and some are Pokemons, but they all are, you know, NFTs and so on. And I also use candlesticks to kind of know exactly when to invest and track the market. It's kind of like you're just saying a bunch of words and you don't know what the heck you're talking about because you're just doing something way too complex. So a rule I have is if you can break it down in one to three sentences in a way that a fifth grader can understand it, then it's too complex and it's too complicated. I don't want to take risks. I want to make the most money. So I basically invest in everything. That's it. That's all I do. Okay. Not a secret. Everybody can understand that. If you can't get it, what you're investing into right now is probably too complicated. So stop. That's the idea. Now, number four is stop pocket watching. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. And in the streets, because I am very street, by the way, it basically means you keep looking at somebody else's progress, somebody else's money, and you're always on them. And you're usually a hater, okay? And it usually means that this person right here made so much more money than I did, and I feel like wasted space because they're doing so much well. And in social media today, you see this all the time. People that are super young, buying houses, buying cars, and buying a bunch of stuff that basically is kind of like incredible. So shout out to them, okay? But overall, you gotta focus on your own story. Focus on your own progress. You know, some people when I said that I invest 20% of my income and it's that much money, they might've gotten jealous or they might've gotten excited and said, well, Tommy, if you can do that and start from nothing, then I can also do that. And that's a great mindset. Use other people to motivate you, but don't compare yourself to them. Compare yourself to yourself, make your own progress and go at your own pace. Your pace is the most important pace. My mom always told me this, okay? Your money won't pay my bills, so I got to worry about what I'm doing. She didn't say that. I made it up, though, but it sounds better when you say somebody else told you, so that's why I said it like that, okay? Now, number five is, guys, stick to the facts. Focus on the facts. Don't stick to the emotions, and don't focus on your emotions, okay? Now, I say this because, you know, right now, do I look happy to you guys? Do I look like everything is fine in my life? You know, I look a little stupid and ugly, but I am happy. I am good. And I am feeling great and amazing. I gotta say that, okay? Because although right now I'm down $19,000 in less than a week or something like that, I'm still good. I'm so happy because I know the facts and the facts show that over time, the market will return back to normal. If I sell my investments during down markets and try to get in during up markets, you're always gonna be selling because there's always gonna be a down market. So all I do is I chill, I eat my carrots, and I trust that I did my research and I know exactly what's gonna happen over the long term. That is all that is important. So eliminate your feelings and your emotions and keep staying on the ride. It's like if me and you got on a roller coaster and I've been on it before and I know that, hey, this is gonna go up, then it's gonna go down. But if you get all the way up there and you're so excited, I'm getting all the way up there and then it's about to drop and you're like, nah, I gotta get off. Open up, I gotta get off. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're not gonna make it, okay? You're not gonna make it. So it's important that you ride through the ups and the downs and you just stick to the facts and don't stick to your emotions. Your emotions will tell you, Tommy, you're losing money right now. Go ahead and just sell everything. Just call it a day, do something else and stop worrying about this stuff, okay? My answer is, I know what I'm doing. I know how it works and I trust my abilities as an investor because I've seen the research over 50 years and I'm gonna be fine. That's logic. Those right there are facts. So eat your carrots and take it easy. Now, number six is, it's something that I just thought about right now, but it's, you know, I used to talk to my grandma a lot. I still do. But sometimes I would mention something and she would literally act like she was stupid, like she didn't understand it because she was so single-mindedly focused on her goals and she's very smart. She has rental property. She lifted all of her kids' success and she's an amazing woman. But what I learned is, you know, we have this saying in my country where when you have a horse, you put these two little things on the side so they're not, they don't get like um, disfocused or distracted on whatever is going on around them. And sometimes when you're investing, you got to stay like this. You got to cover up from every distraction out there because there are a lot of them. You have NFTs, you have Bitcoin, you have dot coms, you have bio stocks, you have Teslas, you have a lot of opportunities out there that you hear about. People are making so much money over here, but you gotta stick to what is working and what you're actually willing to do. My point is, don't get distracted. It's better to pretend like you're stupid or you can't hear or you're hard in hearing than to go ahead and just 
gash, what was that word? To grasp, there you go, to grasp at every opportunity out there. And before you know it, you invested into Bitcoin. Now that thing is down like 50%. You put money into NFTs. Now that thing is basically non-existent. It's wasted. Nobody wants to buy. My point is stick to what works and just keep ignoring and ignoring and ignoring. That's one thing I appreciate a lot for my grandma. She is single-mindedly focused on her goals, and that's why she got them. And that's why a lot of rich people basically get their goals because they're singly-mindedly focused. And Warren Buffett also did that, which is amazing. I bet he learned it from my grandma, but he's older than my grandma. So erase that fact right there. But the last thing I got to give you guys is this. And by the way, if you made it all the way to this point of the video, comment down below, I made it. Because that way I know you made it. Is that, is that, um, is that cool? Is that cool? Well, it is cool to me. So just comment down below. I made it. Now, the last one is this right here, guys. I gotta be honest, okay? This is not a team sport. This is not even a competitive sport, but most of it is just a solo sport. Now, it's collaborative in the sense that I wanna help you guys do as good as I'm doing. And the people that wrote the books also wanted to help me become the best investor. But overall, you have to make your own decisions. You have to be accountable and responsible for your own choices. And at the end of the day, the money you make, I don't work for it. The money you lose won't hurt me. And the decisions that you make, they also won't affect me. This right here is a solo sport. So make sure that you focus on what is best for you. Not what's best for anybody else, what is best for you in this investment game? Now, I say this because in the beginning, I would get very distracted. I would try to keep up with everyone else. I would try to do what everyone else was doing, but my goals are very clear. And what I need to do to get to my goals, I'm gonna get there step by step. I'm not in a rush. While other people rush, take a lot of risks, they lose their money, they have to restart over and over again. I'm not interested in that stuff. I'm interested in going to sleep at night, resting my eyes, having a good sleep, waking up, and seeing my money keep piling up. And that's why I invest the way I invest. I have one last story to tell you, so stick around for this one if you're interested. But this morning, I was out for my run, and I run with this group, and I was basically doing a recovery run. And it's basically when you run, but you're running very slowly, so your body still recovers. That's crazy. I never knew you could actually run and recover at the same time. But I was running at a very slow pace, and my teammate comes next to me, or collaborative partner comes next to me and says, hey, Tommy, you're doing it too slow. And I'm like, no, I'm doing it at the pace I need to go based off my heart rate. So I know what I'm doing. I have the facts together. If you want to run faster, you run faster. It's understanding that, what, and by the way, she's not wrong, because her pace might be faster than mine, but I have to go at my pace. At the end of the day, you go at your pace. My goal is five years, yours can be 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. Go at your pace, whatever is sustainable for you. This is, this is you, this is your life, okay? That's my whole point here. Thanks for watching this video. If you like these stories, steal them and share them with your friends. I really don't care. I probably stole like 90% of them, I think so. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Thanks for watching though, guys. As always, like, subscribe, hit the bell, hit notify. Comment down below any questions. I'm in the comments all day, so comment down below. I'll be there. And don't forget to comment down below. I made it, so I know you made it. And it also helps with the algorithm a bunch, so that's why I also ask you guys to comment, okay? There's no secret here. Thanks for watching. Um, other video right here, and my face is here. Subscribe to the channel, and long-term team officially out. Follow me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. Peace.